Bo Soebele en Josh Mizrak. Heren, gentlemen, welkom. Good evening. Thank you. Last year, the last time we saw you was on the World Championship here. World Champion with the Dutch team. And of course the third title in the Oberliga. What a year. That was, uh, yeah, if I have to on my part, it was a great year. Uh, we had a great success with uh, with the Trapper team and then uh, we carried that over uh, to the men's national team when, you know, obviously there was uh, some additions of some other players that, uh, yeah, filled that role well and uh, uh, we were able to move up back to the normal level. How easy was it for the Bunch coach to get 15 players of Trappers? Well, easier, you know, I think that one thing is easy, second thing is uh, he didn't know where we were going to finish. If, uh, you know, if he had a, an extra game, they'll be on Sunday and there would things be really, uh, really tough with things. So, uh, also, you know, with Duck, uh, you know, he, he plays some things a little different, but I think it's, uh, the, there was a lot of uh, parity and the guys knew each other, so the lines mainly stay the same. So I think that was, uh, uh, that was a bit easier with, uh, with any kind of preparation and, uh, you know, the other guys uh, knew the guys as yeah. well. I think, <clears throat> excuse me. I think part of it is is there's a, a sense of a pride to put on the orange jersey and play for your country. So that, that's a, a central rallying point. And uh, to because we have the Oberliga here and we have uh, most of the other players come from the Bena League. There's that excitement to be able to to join and mesh with that group and and overall contribute. And I think we had a a, a central mindset. And I think it was a good collective unit and not a, a bunch of individuals. And it, it was a real enjoyment for them. You have a lot of questions of our uh, supporters, so we want to ask you about and um, that you can answer it. One of the questions Bo was asked the most on us is how is the man of the match chosen? Because sometimes the people say, well, yeah, it's OK. Sometimes they say, hmm? Uh, the, the, there goes uh, some stuff into it. You know, I, I ask Josh sometimes. Sometimes we even ask the uh, the guys uh, in the bench that help around the team. You know, the equipment guys, the uh, the physiotherapists and massage guys, and uh, and sometimes there's there's a lot of things that go on behind the behind the scenes that are not shown on the ice. That let's say a player does something in in the you know in the room or the way he he yeah. helps other guys. So. Uh, there's a different reasons, and uh, we try to do things certain way. And that's why I asked it because it's not only what's happening on the ice. No, it's for for us the biggest thing is uh, is, the, is the team effort, and you know, I think basically who, who contributes the best uh, in that department will get it. And Josh, a lot of questions came in about the plus-minus system. How does the plus-minus system work? Easy talk to the. Supports. For the the most simplistic definition is when it's even strength and uh, we score a goal, all the players on the ice get a plus, and if we get scored on, all the players get a minus. That's the Include most. the goalie. Goalies, all the, the 10 players, but not the goalies. Goalies, because realistically, goalies are collectively on the ice for 99.3% <laughs> of the, with the exception of the empty netters, of course. So. So when it is equal, also when it's 4-4? Four, four? When it's 4-4, four and four, correct, yes, also plus minus. And then the then you have the power play penalty kill, and those are not technically plus minus, but those are stats that something as a well, stat. Well, yeah, yeah. okay. well the, if, let's say if we're shorthanded, if we're killing a penalty and the guy score a goal, they still get a plus. Okay. And if they get scored on, on the power play, they get a minus. Yeah, but Bo, what can be better? this year comparing the last three years? What can be better? Yeah, there's always little details that could be better. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. You know, the, the way we finished with, uh, with last year, we had, a, we had a huge lead, but I think we can still you know, play a bit better at times. And I think uh, some of the players that were here three years ago as a young players are now coming into an age where they're in, uh, coming into their prime. So uh, uh, working with them on, on little details of the game to make sure they, uh, they just they continue to work hard and to, to improve and, uh, and make themselves better uh, you know, every day and, and the older guys to make sure they keep uh, continuing to, to lead the proper way. So there's, there's just little details. I think the, the, the biggest thing is uh, not to you know, fall, fall asleep and, uh, and think that it's just going to come natural because we won it three times. Uh, um, Josh. 
There's a lot of uh, miles you have to drive with the bus. What are you doing in the bus? <laughs> People ask me, you sit seven, eight, nine, ten hours in the bus? Yeah. Uh, it, you get a chance to kick your feet up, um, maybe you watch a movie, listen to some music. Uh, both of us bring our computers, so in terms of, of game film and, and watching that kind of stuff, obviously with Netflix and Spotify and all those things. and. Uh, and uh, that's kind of what we do and, and for some of our older guys it's kind of nice they get away and they, they get a chance to sleep you know, yeah. where their families are well this gentleman here with his second child uh, pre present he can uh, catch some sleep uh, much needed you know. I heard of the players that they rather go by bus than by plane that's true we uh, we had that experience once with, with Berlin uh, eh? with Berlin and yeah by the time you drive to the airport get everything on get everything off uh, Fly somewhere, get from the airport to the uh, to the rink, and uh, you know, probably somewhere to the hotel to eat. Uh, and you don't really have your own bus, so you cannot kick your feet up and, yeah. and sleep and take your rest. So with the bus, the way we have it, I think it's uh, it's pretty good. You know, they they found their comfort and they know what they need to do by now. And also very important then is the drivers for you. Yeah, because they are part of the family. Yeah. So, what is your preparation of a game day? My preparation, yeah. per, my personal preparation. Yeah. Well, we have a, let's say Friday, if you have a home game, uh, we have a morning skate, uh, about 9.15 until 10. And then uh, afterwards I, I stay in, I do all my uh, write-ups on the board and, uh, and prepare things for, for the game. So I'll be at the ring sometimes till one o'clock, sometimes even later, it depends. Sometimes I'm out of here quicker. Uh, yeah, get kind of things prepped up and then uh, go home, spend a little time with the, with uh, the first daughter, the used to be, yeah, now it's going to be two. Uh, yeah, she gets off of school in the afternoon and uh, and then uh, come back uh, about two and a half hours before the game because I usually yeah got everything prepped up. Some if I need to, I'll come earlier. Uh, and that's uh, that's basically it. Then we have our you know quick little talk. Then we have a pregame meeting and uh, and uh, then we get her going. That's uh, that's kind of a kind of a game game for me sometimes. There's some changes to it, but uh, this would be a home game. Yeah. And then if we're on the road, yeah, obviously we're on the bus and similar uh, in terms of the morning. If, if there's a skate, if if we got enough guys and we got something to work on, uh, and then depending because I live in Eindhoven uh, and whatever my schedule allows for, whatever else, I either go back and then come back to Tilburg or I hang hang around the ring for the day. And, and preparation wise. Uh, I can catch up on some video, yeah. but also we usually have two youth practices that are before our home games, and my role is also to be involved with the yeah. youth. So uh, that first practice, I usually go on the ice, and then the second practice, because the timing of our pregame meeting, I usually stand on the bench, yeah. watch, give some feedback, and then next thing you know. Bo, what is the big difference? between the Tilburg Trappers and the rest of the Oberliga. Yeah, we have all the Dutch players on the team. They have all the we Germans. Have a national team. <laughs> no, I, I, I think the, the way the whole organization is working, you know, from, from the top down is, uh, is a bit different than some of the other teams. I think it's uh, a bit more professional than a lot of the teams, uh, you know, in the way that the front office functions, the way, uh, you know, we have the coaching staff and uh, the way we have the, the the people around the team, you know, doing certain things. I think it's uh, it's at a certain level, and there's a certain culture. And I think the culture is uh, probably the biggest difference between between us and the rest of the teams. You know, there's there's always been a, a winning culture and 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 you know hard fought uh, battles always uh, in Tilburg. I think in the past, and you it know just it kind eh? of you were keeps, here. It's true, and Most. it just and it just you know it, it just kind of wears on onto the players and. Uh, I remember the first year I came in, and yeah, there was a lot of new things. And then you know, from the really older players that I even play against, and uh, you know, you hear the stories, you hear how it is, and uh, you just kind of make sure that you uh, maintain the culture, you know, and then maybe play a little different style than you used to. But uh, there's still a lot of competing and a lot of battling. There's no giving up. It's uh, mainly, I think, the culture, and uh, that's that's a big difference. Josh, we had a lot of great games this year. What was your favorite game? Yeah, you always have to love winning your last game of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's how you're always judged, right? How you're always like, how'd you do last game? When you
you can say that you won your last game of the year. That's a very special and, and exciting time. And that, oh, that was nice. And this gentleman here and, and a lot of those guys on that roster have, have done it for three years. And one of the things I told some of the guys uh, when we were walking around on the ice, I said, don't ever get sick of winning. There's, there's a lot of great things, you know. You see guys blocking shots, uh, you know, when it matters, and exactly. Shots you think, man. Yeah, you, know, you see, you know, and then the guys. Uh, they remember one game we played, and uh, Ian, Ian was getting a shutout, and uh, I think it was the last 20 seconds, and you know, I think it was Ivy blocking a shot, yeah. making sure he was gets here. that shutout. Was, was uh, yeah, it's, it makes a great, great yeah. team, and those are those are great moments aside yeah, from they winning. They take uh, one for the team. Yeah, Absolutely. one for one for another. So something what's already was in a couple of years is the license spieler in Deutschland. How do you think about that? Shouldn't it be fair that we get also the possibility to get the licensed players in here and not as an import? Uh, you mean uh, the, to have players on loan like the other teams have from, uh, from the higher league? Uh, it, it could be, in my opinion, it could be Productive or counterproductive, you know, it depends on the agreements with the club from yeah from up top, uh, and you know, for some teams they yeah they like to have the players, uh, some teams don't. It depends on on, on their visions, and uh, yeah, it could be good, but for us right now, Germans are imports, uh, so we, we could have the same thing with the with the Benelliga teams as long as the NIJB agrees and the German Federation is fine with it, and we would have to have an agreement with the clubs too, but it's uh, yeah. You know, there's certain rules too, so the player would have to play so many games to be able to play in the playoffs, and uh, there's a lot of things around it. So for us, the biggest thing is we have our, our Benelliga team where we can, you know, use the younger players from there when we need to. The management is doing as much as they could to, you know, to be able to move up. I think everybody in the dressing room would like to move up. Uh, you know, me personally uh, would really like that. I think the team is uh, good enough for it, and especially when you can, you know, you can also make a couple changes, add in a couple imports if you need to, and uh, and uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it would be great for for everybody. I think. In the Oberliga, every team has to provide you with a movie of the game. What are you doing with that? Also, there we have to do it also for you and for, for the opponent and for referees and. Uh, People ask what I now. Are you analyzing that, or are you? How do you use that? Well, you can touch up on that, but we. Uh... Well, uh, he he has a, a software program, and actually will be meeting uh, to get me a copy of, of the version and uh, with Knoxport. And what uh, what do you do with the video? You, you learn. You uh, you see tendencies. You see good. You see bad. You see a little bit of everything. And video, today's athlete, today's sports, not just hockey, and video is vital in, in terms of, as coaches, uh, showing players good and bad, and also the ability to go back and double check your stats and make sure that we have plus minus correct, because we write it down on the bench, <laughs> but then you go and check the video and maybe, you know, because players are very, they're very detailed. They want to know, or they, they want to know, or they already know, think they know what, how many goals, how many assists, what, whatever, what their face-off percentage is, and, and all those things. So, as a as a coaching staff, it's important to be able to come back with the answers, to be able to validate and, and be able to give them a clear. If if they have a question yeah. Monday, that they come in and like, hey, what happened on that? That we're able to say, well, hey, this is how we learn. How difficult is it to change a line? Due to the fact of injury or suspension. Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on the schedule and who you're coming Which to play player? against. Well, I think last year, you know, one of the things we uh, we we didn't really lose any points to uh, any of the bad teams. And at the time, we played a lot of the bad teams. We had a lot of injuries. We had a lot of the young guys playing, and they were really eager. And we would have win most of those games by a goal. And uh, but we would never lose uh, those games against bad teams. The years before. We were able to lose games in Harza Falcon, who you know yeah, barely had any points, and uh, and a couple other teams. So I think that was, uh, you know, in certain things, it's 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 tough. You know, towards the end, you have to think what's going to make everybody better, and you know, don't want to really, you know, if one of the top lines somebody gets injured, and the other two lines 
top lines are okay, you know, how, how to fix it in. But, you know, still on the on the fourth line, we have uh, good players. You know, last year we had uh, Nick, Max and Jonah there and they, they could all play anywhere. And, yeah. you know, Max is really skilled and smart. And Nick's been on the first team here for, I think, nine yeah, years yeah, or something. Yeah. So, well, uh, he and he's got more skill than people think. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, we had some choices uh, to, yeah. to, to fill in spots. And then the kids helped out as well. Yeah, but you need them. Yeah, of course. That's that's what you need. You need to bring up kids every year, and, uh, and especially when I was young, and also uh, Reno was is growing and growing. But when you look at Max after his injury, after his three months out, yeah. how he came back? Yeah, he's uh, be a very good player. You know, as long as you know if he's got his mindset on it and everything is good, then uh, yeah, he's yeah, got he's, he's got the skill potential. Uh, yeah. You know, you just gotta make sure he competes all the time to. Because there's you know, a lot of fun of him. Yeah, it was the first year for him to, to play uh, man's hockey, so... Uh, you know. was, was well, next coming season, look behind you. Three big ones. Could it be four? Could it be four? It's a nice hot Dutch game. Could it be four in a row? Well, Is that a from on the table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it could be four, if you ask me. It's, uh, What's you your biggest opponent, you think? Biggest opponent? I think there's going to be a couple. Essen. Essen. Uh, I think yeah, they restructured. Duisburg is going to be pretty good too. As you know, I think. A couple of I think, two players in. I think Hanover uh, Indians are going to be pretty good. Halle is uh, you know could be pretty strong and uh, you know Leipzig always competes hard. Thank you for your cooperation. Yeah, thank you. And thank you. Let's make it four in a row. That'd be great. That sounds like a plan. <laughs>